Hello everybody, my name is Jack and today we're going to be looking at doing a student's t-test, both independent and dependent, inside of RStudio. Uh, so there's a couple prerequisite things that we need to do before we get into this. Uh, doing t-tests among some of the other psych statistics tests requires the psych package. Uh, and so we can get this by saying install.packages psych comma dependencies you can hit enter when stuff like that pops up for you true and then just hit enter and i already have this package installed um, so your installation might take a little bit longer than mine you can pause the video and wait for it to finish all right so we have it downloaded and so we want to let our our studio know that we're going to be working inside this psych library right and the library is the function so we say library psych and it's going to say hey make sure that we have all these psych functions and that they're easy to call for us, all right? And so obviously if we're gonna be working with data, we need some data. So you can come over here to import data set and I'm going to import a CSV, which stands for comma separated values. Um, it's like an Excel spreadsheet, but the way the data comes in is a little bit different. I prefer using CSVs for stuff like this. So we'll hit browse and go to example data, all right? and it will pop up right here. And so we have three columns. We have one with uh, categorical data. We have dog in 10 places and cat in 10 places. And then we have some integer columns. Uh, all of these were randomly generated. There's no actual correlation to anything. Um, but we have two columns there. So we'll just hit import and you can see it pops up over here and it also pops up over here and you can give it a quick look over make sure there's no NA or missing variables that might cause issues later on. All right, so first thing you wanna do is say attach, and the code for this is attach sheet, right? But with sheet, you wanna replace that with the name of your data sheet. So example, underscore data, hit enter, and that makes it live. Uh, this just pops up because I was working on something previously, you don't need to worry about it. And then we are, be, we are ready to begin working on the independent samples t-test. Um, and so an independent samples t-test compares two sample groups on data where there is no dependency between two samples. Uh, that's a lot more apparent when you look at, or sorry, that's different than dependent samples groups where there is dependency between two samples. Um, probably going to make a video on the differences between those, but for now we're just looking at the code. And so put a, uh, one of these signs, hashtag for you. Uh, we're gonna say this is our independent samples t-test code, right? And so R won't actually run this, it's just for us to be able to read it, right? So we call it, uh, we start calling this t-test function with t.test parentheses, dv, which stands for dependent variable, tilde iv, which is our independent variable, alternative, equals less uh, and this alternative code is for your alternative hypotheses um, which can be either two dot cited uh, which is default greater or less um, i use less in this case uh, works for these basic t-tests you can say var dot equal equals true which is related to the paired right here, which we will say is false. And the reason it's false is because the data clusters are not paired because this is an independent samples t-test. If it was a dependent samples t-test, the data would be uh, paired and you would set that equal to true. And so this var dot equal um, pools the variance um, of it pulls the estimated variance. If it's false, then variance is estimated for both groups. You just leave it as true for right now. Uh, works the best. And so this is all you need for an independent samples t-test. And so since we attached our data, which means that, um, well, basically with that, you could, if you don't attach it, you'd have to call your data like this, where you say example data dollar sign score for a dependent variable, right? Because our dependent variable for an independent samples t-test has to be uh, what's called interval ratio, right? And our dependent variable has to be categorical, which is not a number. 
right? It's going to generally look like a word. Um, and so we have to go integer here, and then we're going to be putting in example data uh, animal, which is our categorical, right? And so if we run this, it will work. Oh, example data not found. Ah, because I did not capitalize that. So we'll just kind of do that. You can hit up to call the last line. There you go. So it prints out your two sample or independent sample t test. Here's your t score, your degrees of freedom, your p value, uh, which is not significant. And then the means for both groups. Um, but rather than typing this out fully, uh, since we attached it, you can merely say um, here through here, it's only going to say animal and it's only going to say score, right? And so it prints out the exact same thing. There's no difference. Um, it's just something to save you time, which is beneficial when you're working in large sheets. And so you can actually run it from here. If you select your line, then hit run. Oops, right, because I didn't change it here. Okay, there we go, hit run, and it pops out the same thing. Um, well, so what if you want to run t-tests, and you're going to be running t-tests not just today, but tomorrow and for the next couple weeks, and you don't want to type this out every time. What you can do is save this t-test inside of what's called a function, which allows you to call it and use more than one spreadsheet and it will give you the same thing without having to type out uh, all this t-test and dv tilde iv alternative all that stuff so what you want to do is you're going to start by naming it which is what you're going to be calling it uh, when you get it so i'm going to call it independent samples t-test and then you do this little arrow right there and it indicates that that is the name and we're going to be storing a function inside of that name and the function is going to be looking for a dependent variable and an independent variable right let me close this off with brackets bring that down here and tab this in so it looks nice and pretty and it's not throwing any errors so then what you want to do is select this and you're going to hit run and it's not going to do anything because we're not calling any data in here. It's just saying, hey, we're going to put in a dependent variable and we're going to put in an independent variable. And so you can see it showed up over here on the right, on the right. And when you click it, you can see the code that is stored there. And so if you come down here and let's say we want to run the scores versus animals again, you say independent samples t-test and it pops up, you can hit enter. And in the little yellow box that pops up, it tells you what it's looking for. So it's looking for a dependent variable and an independent variable. And some of your other functions you'll look at will say dependent variable, independent variable, and independent variable too. So this is just a handy way for you to remember. And so we know our dependent variable is going to be score. And our second variable, our independent variable, is going to be animal. And you can just hit enter. And it spits out the exact same thing as if you're putting in this. And so that's really beneficial if you're going to be using this t-test function over and you have over and over and you have multiple different categories. Um, so like age, right? Because otherwise you'd have to type out all of this stuff and change it for age. You can say independent samples t-test, age, comma, animal, and hit enter. And it will give you the results for that as well, right? So here's your t, your degrees of freedom, your p-value, and there's the means for both groups. All right, so that's independent uh, samples t-test. If you want to look at a dependent samples t-test, uh, it is almost the exact same code, right? So we're going to start by nesting it in a function because uh, we're going to basically mimic what we did before. We're going to say dependent samples t-test arrow. We're going to store this function. And this is also going to be looking for a dependent variable, an independent variable, bracket t.test, same thing, um, dependent variable, same, iv, same alternative, plus, and var.equals, true again, in terms of the way we're handling variance, but when we get to paired, it is going to be true. 
And that has to do with the way that it calculates individual scores, right? Um, and it is looking for a difference between the summated scores of the dogs and the summated scores of the cats. And it's going to spit out something that shows if there is a significant difference between those two groups, right? I'm going to select this, click Run, and it stores it up here, right? So you can see it's looking for that. But we haven't run any actual data through it. Um, and so remember, this is the only line that really matters. This is the name of the function. This is telling it that this is going to be a function contained between this bracket and this bracket, right? So we're going to call it the same way. Start typing the name of it, dependent samples t test. And again, the little yellow box indicates we're looking for a dependent variable, comma, and then an independent variable. So we're going to be looking at age, comma, animal. And when you hit enter, it's going to pop out this paired t test, and it says, here's your t score, degrees of freedom, which is nine, right? Because we're only comparing, because um, your degrees of freedom is the number of scores in a group minus one. And so we have 10 here, minus one is nine, and 10 here, minus one is nine. Um, because they're paired, there's only nine, versus up here where the degrees of freedom is 18. Um, and the p-value indicates there's nothing significant. Again, this was randomly generated numbers, so it doesn't matter that much. And the mean of the differences is negative 16.7, right? And so you can also use this again, just because it's easier and quicker now that it's saved inside the function. Dependent samples t, dependent samples t test, and you'll say score, comma, animal, and it will pop out running the differences between score and animal. And these are going to be slightly different than up here, right? So uh, t-score, degrees of freedom, p-value, and mean sample differences. All right, and so I believe that about does it for this video. Have a good rest of your evening or a good rest of your day.